We're gonna be playing around with Linux file systems and partitions and disks. Here's the deal. A couple days ago, I installed an mSATA drive on my computer. Uh, I did a little video putting it in. Um, and now I actually have three hard drives on my computer. And now that I have three, there are some things I need to move around. There are some things I need to optimize and stuff like this. So this is what we're gonna be doing and talking about here. So to be clear, um, I put in a solid state, uh, an mSATA solid state drive. It's around, it, on paper, it was 256 gigabytes. Here it is here. You'll notice that, uh, of course, I just ran lsblk to look at my block devices. It has no partitions on it, just this drive here. And I have two other hard drives. Um, one other one, my SDA here, um, it is a, it's also a solid state drive. It's a normal size, two and a half, whatever uh, size drive. Um, on paper, it's supposed to be one terabyte. This is what I have my main system on. And again, it's a, a solid state drive, so it's nice and fast and stuff like that. Um, I actually have two partitions. One is my root partition uh, that, of course, is mounted at, you know, root at slash. Um, that's where I have all my operating system. It's only 30 gigabytes. I think it's around, let's see, um, uh, I think it's around half full right now. Yeah, it's around half full right now. Um, and I also, that's just because I removed a bunch of Pac, like Pac-Man caches and stuff like that. It originally was like pretty close to 30 gigabytes. So I was cutting it close. So I need some more room for that. And at the same time, I also have a home partition, which is nearly full right now. I need to clear, clean a lot of stuff out of this. Um, but it is part of my main hard drive as well. You'll notice additionally, I have one other drive here. And this, I, actually I should show you. So of course, all of this is, you know, my laptop. Um, you got the mSATA that's around here, you got the hard drive that's around here, but I also have a little base here, and ThinkPads can come with bases. I can, of course, take this laptop off, and when I get home, I can plug it into my base. Everything's already plugged into the base. Um, but the nice thing about those bases is you can actually hook up a, an extra hard drive as well. So I have a two terabyte drive here that I actually keep most of my, uh, I, I don't know, like videos and media and stuff on. Uh, we can actually look at the content. Notice that all of it is mounted to media and I can check that out. Uh, we can look at the contents here. I have like the directory that's creations. That's like my YouTube videos and source files from my videos. Uh, I have a backup of my mail um, and I have movies and television that I've downloaded over the years. You can actually, I mean, I have a lot of this stuff. It's filled up, I don't know, a lot. Uh, just a lot of space over the years. Um, so I need an extra drive for that, so that's why, why I have it. Now notice again, it is mounted to slash media, but a lot of times I want a more convenient location for that kind of stuff. So actually, you know, if you look at my main, uh, my home directory, I have this uh, video uh, videos directory. And inside of that, I actually have a movies and a television subdirectories. And those are actually just shortcuts that link to this um, link to that drive, link to the directories on that drive. Um, now, I'm, I'm gonna be moving some stuff around in this video um, and deciding how I want everything mounted. Now, on Linux, when you have multiple drives, or well, really, even when you have one drive, um, there's one particular file that's highly important, and that is um, fstab, etsy slash fstab. I'm gonna open this file up. Actually, let me move my uh, head down a little bit because we might need the whole screen. Um, so the FS tab file, if you've ever installed Arch or any other minimal install distribution, you've seen this file, uh, you have to generate this file. Basically what this, each of these lines here, they are telling Linux where to mount your drives. So for example, one of our partitions, this is the one, it, it's unique identifier looks like this. Uh, each partition is gonna have a UUID, a unique identifier, um, and it's gonna be mounted to slash to root. Uh, here's our home directory. And here's also my media directory. Um, the only thing important to note here is that it has the no fail option. And that's because, you know, when I don't have my computer connected to its base, I don't want Linux to say, hey, I couldn't mount this drive, so I'm not gonna bother to start. That's what that's about. If you wanna learn more, you can read the Arch Wiki uh, or something like that. And I also have a line here for mounting uh, SD cards, um, which is not actually based on UUID, it's actually based on the device location uh, because really you only have one SD card slot. So there's no reason to have more than one. Anyway, 
and that's not super important here. So in this video, here's what I'm thinking about doing. Uh, let me just sort of talk through what I'm thinking about. So I want to move my operating system. So again, my operating system is on this partition. I want to move it to this MSATA drive, okay? I want to have a new partition on this MSATA drive, and it's going to have my entire operating system. And there are a couple other things that I want to move over. For example, um, I have, actually, where is it? Um, so I have a copy of the Monero blockchain. It's at least a pruned copy of the Monero blockchain. Um, and blockchains can get very big. Uh, actually, let's see how big this one is in local share bit Monero. I'm about to type but Monero. Um, it's around 30 gigabytes and it's only getting bigger. Um, so I was thinking about on this new drive, it's 256 gigabytes. I'll have my new operating system or the I'll copy over my old operating system. Um, and I'll have maybe a copy of the Monero blockchain. I honestly have enough space to maybe have the Ethereum blockchain and some other stuff. Uh, I was thinking about downloading offline map data and that can take, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes, but I might be able to actually fit that on, on the new drive. So that's an option as well. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to create a partition on this drive. I'm going to move some of that stuff over and then I'm going to show you the process of um, telling your computer to boot off of a new drive and ignore this old partition. Okay, and what I think I'm going to do with this partition, I haven't totally decided yet, um, but what I think I'm going to do is maybe in another video, I'll have a, an encrypted partition that I, ha I hide some more, I don't know, sensitive stuff on, maybe my old emails or something like that. But anyway, let's get this party started. So again, um, I'm, I'm going to become root and uh, let's start by making a new partition on this uh, drive just to do it. Um, so I'm going to run, let's, let's use fdisk, and I'm going to run fdisk on dev slash sdc because that's the partition we're working on. Okay. Now this is going to allow you to delete or add partitions. I don't have any partitions here, so I can just type in in for new partitions. And I'm basically just going to press enter, 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 um, and then yes on that. Okay. Um, so all of that is, I mean, that just was deciding how big you want your partition. I just want one partition to fill up the entire drive. I'm not going to do anything more complicated. Once you're done, run the command W and that will write. Now, of course, I should be clear, um, you know, unless you know what you're doing, don't, uh, you know, I'm deleting everything that's on this hard drive. There's nothing on this hard drive, but uh, just be careful if you, you have partitions, you might be deleting or something like that. Okay, so now I've written the changes here. So now, oops, ls, so hard not having control L. Um, lsblk, I now have this new partition. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy over, I'm gonna copy over this, uh, this other partition to our new partition. And I'm gonna use, the program I'm gonna use for that is DD, Disk Destroyer, not actually what it stands for, but you just got to be careful around this program because if you don't know what you're doing, if you type the wrong thing, you might be deleting stuff that you didn't intend to. So how DD works is you basic, it's for copying drives to other drives or copying uh, directories to ISO files or vice versa. Um, and how it usually works is you give it an input file. And my input file is going to be the um, the hard drive that I'm going to be copying. Okay, so I'm going to be copying dev sda1. Okay, so I'm going to give it that partition. And of, that's output file, I'm going to give dev sdc1, and this is our new partition. And of course, this is a blank partition, there's nothing on it. Notice I haven't even make, made a file system. Actually, you know what, maybe, let's talk about that first. Um, before I run this dd command, you don't have to do this if you're running dd, but if you just want to make a file system, you probably know you are going to want to run make fs.extf or ext4 and then run it on the partition you want the file system on. You don't have to do this if you're using dd. dd will take will uh, move the file system over for you, but that's just a little note. Just if you're confused, why can't I copy files over to my new partition? Because you need a file system on it. But anyway, dd gives you this automatically. So anyway, our input file again is our uh, partition up here that we're copying and we are going to copy it to dev sdc1 and I'm also going to say status equals progress okay and I'm going to run this command I'll go ahead just double check to see everything looks good and I'm going to run this command now here is um, and this is going to take a little bit of time because it's copying over something like I guess 15 gigabytes of data 
Uh, I mean, it's a 30 gigabyte partition, but around 15 gigabytes actually had stuff in there. Um, in the meantime, I want to answer, answer a brief or respond to a brief thing that people brought up in the other video. And that is in the other video when I was installing my MSA, MSATA um, SSD in this computer, a lot of people said, yeah, you've got to be careful with MSATAs on ThinkPad X220s because they only have a SATA 2 connection. Whereas the normal hard drive has a SATA 3 connection and that can run a lot faster. So you might not want to have your operating system on the SATA 2 connection, even though that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I want to be clear, yes, that is true. Um, but when you really look at it, like SATA 2 connections, they max out, I think, at around like 3 gigabits per second. Whereas SATA 3s max out at around 6 gigabits per second. I think that's, that's how it works. Um, and the thing is, although that will make a difference, like it's going to make a difference right now when I'm, tra I'm transferring a whole lot of data. Actually, frankly, I, I don't even know if it will because there, there are other things that might bottleneck your speeds. Um, but uh, to be honest, it, you can look at the benchmarks, the differences between a SATA 2 connection and SATA 3 connection, they are immaterial. Okay, if for normal use, unless you have hyper powered equipment that is actually moving terabytes and terabytes of data, it's not going to make a lick of difference. It's not going to change your start speeds. It's not going to even change most of your transfer speeds. It like the cap is so much higher than the data you'll actually be transferring. It's not going to make a big difference. It might make a difference when I'm moving all these files right now. I don't even think it does. I, I don't know if the math works out. I mean, it's 64 megs for, per second, but um, yeah, a lot of people, I, I got that uh, that dispute a lot, I guess that concern, it's just not a big deal. I guarantee you, again, look at the benchmarks. There are benchmarks out there. It doesn't make a difference. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video right now and wait so you don't have to wait to the end of this if we're not talking about something educational and we'll continue our journey. All right, so it looks like it's about done. Um, now, there are a couple more things we need to do here. So first again, let's run LSBLK. And uh, here, here's the thing. It looks like um, so we still have our partition and, and it's the same size, but one weird thing that's going to happen if you start trying to copy over, let's say you try and copy over 50 more gigabytes of data into this partition, something weird is going to happen. It's going to say there's no space on this drive. That's because there's a sense in which uh, it has also copied over some information about the partition, specifically it's sort of this new partition that we've moved over, it thinks it's only 30, 30 gigabytes. So we actually want to tell it to be resized. Um, so the thing we're going to do now is we're going to run uh, resize, what is it, resize to FS, and we're going to run it on that drive that we just copied everything to, dev sdc1. Okay, oh yeah, you got to, uh, sorry, you got to run e2 first. I always forget this on uh, the drive and that this will just take a second but then yes fix yes fix uh, okay uh, now we can resize it um, and I don't actually know how okay yeah I think that'll be, I think that's all you have to do I feel like I was expecting it to be really long so now we have with this command resize to FS we have now told it Oh, you know, you're not really just 30 gigabytes. You're actually 238 gigabytes, 0.5. Okay, so that's one thing we need to do. Um, another thing we need to do, and this might actually, I don't actually know if you rebooted your computer right now, I think you might have some kind of error or kernel panic. I don't know because here's, here's why, okay? Run LSBLK, but run it with the F option. And look, look at this. Um, so F actually lists out some more stuff, including your UUIDs from all of your drives. Now UUIDs, you know, one of the, I, I'm not exactly sure what UUID stands for. I don't, I don't know, like some kind of unique, unique ID or something like that. I don't know what the other U stands for. I'm not, who cares? Who cares? But the important thing is every partition has to have a different UUID. When you create a file system, um, it's going to just create this random thing that, you know, you expect never to see in any other partition. But since we use DD to uh, copy over this entire partition to a new thing, it actually has the same UUID. And that's going to cause problems because when your computer boots, it's going to be looking for a particular UUID. I don't exactly know what it's going to do. It might just pick whichever one it finds first. I'm, I'm not going to reboot my computer and find out. We got to fix this little issue. Okay, and how you do that is with the tune to FS command. 
And with that, you can basically, you can look at the options actually. Um, it allows you to do some different stuff, but the thing that we care about is the capital U option, which I don't see here. It's probably right in front of, oh yeah, yeah. You can change your UUID here. So what we do, again, we're working on SDC1. So we're gonna say tune FS, tune to FS, uh, capital U, and then say random. Uh, you could actually give it an actual UUID you want it to have, but that's frankly a bad idea unless you're doing something programmatic. Just say random and then say dev SDC1, okay? Now if you do that, say yes to continue. Um, I don't think this should take very long, all right? So now, actually we'll just run lsblk okay with the F option, and we now see, although the UUID used to be um, the same as this one, it was starting with 59. It now, now starts with 94. Okay, great, that's perfect. Um, except for it isn't perfectly perfect. Okay, we're not, we're not done yet, we're just getting closer. We're always getting closer. Um, so here's the deal, now, now we, have a, uh, we have our installation uh, pretty much moved over to this partition, we could reboot, but it's not actually gonna boot from this thing. There are a couple more things we have to change. Specifically, I'm actually gonna mount I'm actually gonna mount this partition, SDC1. I'm gonna mount it to MNT, okay? So now we can actually look and see, just to validate that all the stuff is supposed to be there, we can look in there and see, hey, look at, look at all those directories. That's probably a, a Linux file system. Um, so yeah, that's what we wanna see. If you saw nothing there, that would be a problem because you had some trouble copying stuff over. Um, so now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we, we have to change a couple things in this file directory because it's, it has boot information that is looking, it is looking for this partition, this UUID, and we wanna change the times it mentions that to this, okay? So um, I'm actually going to do something uh, this will probably actually be required in a minute, but um, I am going to run um, the command rtools chroot. Uh, I'm gonna use a change root environment right now. Um, now rtools chroot, this is only gonna be on Artix Linux. For Arch Linux, it's gonna be R chroot, whatever it is. You remember in the Arch Linux installation process, basically what the chroot command is, or change root command is, is um, you give it a, a directory, and you're gonna jump into a shell at that directory if there is an, another Linux installation there. So that's what we wanna do. Um, now on Artix, let's see, uh, what was it? Yeah, so on Artix Linux, you're gonna wanna install rtools base. Uh, that's the thing that gives you this command. On Arch, I forget what it is. It's probably, I think it's like Arch install scripts. You can probably look it up. Uh, you're a big boy, you know how to do it. Um, so I am going to run Arch uh, rtools to root on mount, and I'm also gonna say bash. I'm gonna tell it to run bash, just because otherwise it'll drop you into uh, just a POSIX shell that isn't very interactive. Um, all right, so here we are, and we are now print working directory. Well, actually, let's, let's look at L A LSBLK from here. Uh, we are now inside of that um, new installation that we just moved over, and if we run LSBLK in here, it won't actually uh, nothing else is mounted in its opinion, right? So anyway, we are now in our new installation. So there are a couple things we need to change. One of them is sort of the thing I talked about earlier, that is FS tab. Okay, so again, in FS tab, I'm using NeoVim, I forget. Um, we need to change this UUID, which is the root device, to our new root device UUID. Um, so I'm gonna go out of this, and again, I'm gonna run LSBLK with the F option, uh, why does that not show up? Why is it not giving the UUID? I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna run it on this machine. That must be some weird uh, incompatibility with the change root environment. So I'm gonna copy the um, UUID from our new uh, partition, and I'm gonna go into that uh, FS tab file, and I'm gonna paste that in. Okay, so I paste that in. And be sure that you're doing it in the, the um, what was I saying? in the, uh, the, the new install, not the old one. You don't need to change that. Wait, why am I? That's not the one I need to change. It's this one I need to change. Silly, silly me. See, when you're talking at the camera, sometimes you forget stuff. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. So now it is equal to this new UUID. Um, everything else I'm gonna keep exactly the same. That should work for now. So I'm gonna 
uh, save that. Um, additionally, if we're in this environment, there are a couple other things we need to change. One of them is our Grub uh, installation. Uh, we want to reinstall Grub and we want to recreate a Grub uh, config. And the reason why is if you look in your Grub config on this new installation, you can look for UUID and you will see that it's using this old UUID and it's used a couple times like here as well. Um, so we're, we're going to want to do two things. First off, let's install Grub. Actually, just to be clear, you want to run grub install on dev sdc. Do not run it on dev sdc1. Um, and I should also say this is going to be different if you're using a UEFI device. You'll have to do some things that are um, run a slightly different command. You can look it up on the Arch Wiki. But in my case, since I'm using legacy boot, uh, I'm just going to be running it on dev sdc, not dev sdc1. Uh, I'm just going to run that. Hopefully there will be no, okay, no error reported. And then I'm gonna say grub make config. And that is going to remake that config that I just opened that had the wrong UUIDs. Okay, so grub, uh, yeah, make our config. And that'll take just one second. Um, warning, blah, 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 who cares about that error message? And then just to double check, let's look at that grub, grub uh, config. Let's look at our UUID. Oh, look at that. Our UUID now begins with 94. It's our new uh, root. Okay, so now what I'm here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ex exit out of all of this. Um, I'm now going to restart my computer. And here's what I expect to see. Actually, let me go ahead and unmount that drive just because why not? Here's what I expect to see. I expect to see this will not be mounted anymore because we're not going to be booting off of this system. We're going to be booting off of this one. This is going to be mounted to root. This is not going to be mounted, and then uh, the other stuff should be basically the same because we're using an FS tab that is looking for those directories. So now, or uh, file systems or UUIDs, whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to reboot and let's hope it works. All right, I'm back and everything looks exactly the same, but that's what we expect. Uh, let's see if our uh, it's worked. Look at that. Okay, so now our root is actually our new installation. We could actually delete our old installation on this wimpy, you know, 30 gigabyte drive or 30 gigabyte partition. Doesn't even matter. We could we could do a lot of different things with it. Um, but uh, so now we're we're basically there. Now I do want to be totally clear. On some of your computers, you might need to in the BIOS settings manually say, okay, start from my MSATA drive or my new drive, which whichever drive you're moving to. Uh, you want to boot from that, obviously not your own, because it might be that your BIOS is going to be looking for this, uh, some way to boot off this drive before it gets to this. You just want to make sure that it has pri the drive you want has priority. Okay, so anyway, um, so now we have that. Now I'm going to start moving over the things that I want. So as I mentioned before, so I have a copy of the Monero blockchain. And I want to move it over to um, I want to move it over to like this. Uh, it's currently on my home partition, taking up 30 gigabytes of space. I want to move it to this place because now there's so much room. Um, I think where I'm going to move it, um, I'm going to become root here. I think I'm going to move it to user share and then BitMonero or something like that. And notice its location now is local share BitMonero. Um, user share I think is usually where you have like um, uh, files and directories that multiple people will be using and stuff like that. And theoretically, the Monero blockchain, if I had other users on this computer, which I don't, but uh, theoretically, that would be the place to put it. So that's where I'm going to move it. And that, of course, is part of the root file system now um, on this new partition. So let's go ahead and move that. Um, so I'm going to say move. Actually, let, let's be conservative here. Let's say, no, let's not be conservative. Let's just, let's just copy it over. Let's uh, or move it over. Uh, so I'm going to move bit Monero to user share bit Monero. Um, I don't think it'll make a difference, but I'll give it the V option so we can see the stuff that's happening. Just want to make sure that everything's good there. Um, so this will take a little bit of time. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's actually going to take a good bit of time because it's 30 gigabytes. So I might have to, yeah, I'll stop the video here and I'll come back in a second. As while this is loading, maybe I should tell you what Monero is. I, I don't know. So Monero, in case you don't know, in case you're a boomer, uh, Monero is a cryptocurrency. Um, so there's there's a lot of misunderstandings about cryptocurrencies. Like there's this idea that oh, because they're used by like um, uh, I don't know drug dealers and stuff that they're all secret. Um, you know, cryptocurrencies 
like bl block or excuse me, blockchain, Bitcoin, for example, you can look up on the blockchain all the transactions that have ever occurred on Bitcoin. It's not like just because it's called crypto, that doesn't mean it's like hidden in any way. Like every transaction on Bitcoin is public. Uh, you don't necessarily have names attached to the addresses, but if someone has their public address out there, you can pretty easily uh, figure out who, you know, who's transferring and stuff like that. Monero is very cleverly made, but Monero is like the one cryptocurrency that you cannot monitor. And it's very nice because of that and other reasons. Uh, look at that. I spilled water all over my shirt. Sorry, the Chad guzzle. I, I can't help myself. All right. So anyway, that has copied over. Um, so there are a couple things I want to do. Uh, firstly, let's just, let's just look at that. Actually, well, let me... What are the permissions of this directory? Did it copy over permissions? Okay, yeah, it still belongs to Luke. So I can, you know, I don't need administrative, you know, permissions to like uh, make changes to it. Um, I am going to, this is not necessarily germane to my video, but you notice that I was looking at this alias that's MD. Um, since, you know, I don't like having things in my home directory, so of course I moved to everything to local share or somewhere where I don't have to, you know, LSA and see all the junk. Um, I'm actually going to change this, um, I'm going to change this alias here. So now that it is no longer home share, blah, 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 it's now user share, uh, user share. You know what? Is it actually pronounced user? I never really thought about it. I've never heard some, I mean, like, I know it's it's a, a total new friend thing to pronounce this as et cetera or something like that. It's Etsy, kids, it's Etsy. But I, I never really thought about USR. Is that, do people pronounce that user? Am I, am I stupid for not knowing that? Okay, so now we've moved over to that kind of stuff. Um, I think I might end the video here, um, but I, I'll tell you the kind of stuff that I might do in another video because it's more of a, a specific thing. Um, I mentioned, I may have mentioned that I'm thinking about getting rid of this here partition. Um, you notice that, you know, I don't really encrypt many of my partitions. Like, I'm not a big fan of encryption. Um, I'm not too worried that my hard drive is going to get stolen or something like that. And I frankly don't have that much sensitive stuff on my computer, to be honest. Um, but I think in another video, I will turn this partition into an encrypted partition. Uh, and I'll probably put my mail and maybe some other stuff in there. Um, and I think I said at the beginning of the video, or maybe I did, um, I might start, um, uh, I might have like the Ethereum blockchain offline and stuff like that. Um, so other recommendations, let me just give some recommendations. I, I alluded to this earlier, but you know, a lot of people ask me, um, when you, let's say you have, you don't have much storage space on your machine and you want to be able to, you know, okay, like have a, have a, uh, a, 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 um, uh, hard drive that has a whole bunch of stuff like maybe your movies and music and stuff like this um, but you get confused of like oh where should I have it mounted or you know what what kind of stuff should I do with it there like it doesn't really matter where you mount stuff now you I mentioned before I mount this drive to media uh, on a on a, in any Unix Linux file system it doesn't really matter because it's so easy to make symbolic links from places as I said I have uh, links in my video directory that link directly to, to there. And in fact, in many respects, it's better to use links uh, for multiple reasons. One of them being, if I accidentally delete my home directory, it actually is not going to delete this stuff. It's going to delete the links. It's not going to delete the actual files. So it's actually sort of nice if you have... Uh, one thing I sort of recommend to people, if you just have like a big external drive or a big uh, extra hard drive you want to attach to your computer, um, if you just have directories in there that's like, you know, music, movies, um, uh, email, whatever else, and then link those to more sensible locations, that is probably the best thing you can possibly do. Because a lot of people will do weird stuff where they take a drive and partition it into like 20 different folders and then they manually mount it in FS tab. Don't do that. That that is too complicated. What you really want to do is you want to mount it, mount it to one place. Don't make more partitions than you need to, and then link it to the places you think that normal people want will expect to see them. That's definitely what I recommend. Um, so anyway, that's about it. I might do that video on encrypting a hard drive and mounting it and stuff like that uh, soon. And I'll see you guys next time.